Holidays are filled with crowds, parties, dinners, and more. In fact, we are in the thick of the respiratory virus season, and the number of cases for things like RSV continue to rise. Pediatrician Dr. Cynthia Cross is with La Bonner Children's Hospital and the University of Tennessee College of Medicine. Dr. Cross is here with some tools that we can use to protect ourselves and others from RSV. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yes, we are in the thick of RSV season. It's the most common virus that lands kids in the hospital, particularly little babies who are under a year of age. It tends to pick on the most vulnerable. But other folks can get it too. Adults over 60 are oh. at risk. Um, and the excitement this season has been that there are new uh, treatments and preventive measures for RSV. Okay, so, let's talk about that. So there are vaccines, right? But yes. they're kind of new, so people are feeling a little confused about it. People Can you walk us through a, that? Yeah, people are a little bit hesitant about vaccines. I think that whole thing started during the COVID era. Right. And these vaccines are safe. There's one for adults over 60. I've gotten that one already. Okay. Um, there is one for pregnant women uh, between 32 and 36 weeks during the RSV season. RSV season is typically thought of as September through January. If you live in different parts of the world, your season may be a little bit different. Um, and then there is a new antibody for younger kids during their first RSV season. The excitement with that has waned a little bit because it's in short supply. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so it's interesting that they're very specific for different groups. Yes. Okay. Now this year, uh, the, we have those newly approved uh, vaccines, but can you also talk about the importance of um, when to get it and when to know to get it? So for COVID vaccine, anybody six months and older can get it, particularly if you have health risks, chronic medical conditions like diabetes or like me, asthma um, or heart disease. It's a good idea to go ahead and get the vaccine because you may have more difficulty getting over it. Flu vaccine for anybody six months and older as well. And for older adults, there's even a high dose flu vaccine um, that you can get. And then of course, um, see your doctor if you don't know whether or not you need it or whether or not you want it. It's good to have shared decision making and your doctor or PCP can advise you on what your risks are and whether or not you should get it. Okay, and are there measures that we can take outside of getting vaccinations? Some people are opting not to. I mean, wh what do you do? Right, so you can still mask up. You've probably seen people in the community with masking, that's okay. Hand washing is always important. Hand washing, hand sanitizer, cough into your sleeve. If you're sick, stay home. You're most contagious when you have fever. So if you have fever, don't go to your family gathering. Um, and I that's always- That's the thing. Yeah. People, you know, they come in, they're like, oh, I just, I just have a little, I don't know, my sinuses are messy, my allergies. And you're like, uh -huh. are you sure it's allergies? That's right, because <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> and if you're in a place that, say, uses joint equipment like keyboards, right. wipe down your keyboard, mm. wipe down your phone, um, because you can get RSV from contacting surfaces. So Okay, so that's yeah. the thing. It's surfaces uh -huh. as opposed to the it airborne. Can be airborne okay. or surfaces. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, keep your hands away from your face. You know how your mom used yeah. to tell you to keep keep your hands away from your face, that actually does help because you have your mucous membranes and if you contact them with something that had the virus on it, you can get it that way or you rub your eyes. This is such good information. Okay, so I love what we did here. Uh, we know that you're gonna be coming in with us monthly. So we put some questions, um, we posed to people out in the community on our Facebook page to, um, Pose questions to Dr. Cross here. And so um, this one was a good one. Okay, we asked those parents those questions. One mom asks, am I overreacting by bringing in my baby in for a virus? Kelsey says, uh, their noses get stuffy and their breathing sounds harder almost with every cold. I know to look for retractions. You're gonna explain mm -hmm. what that is. Yes. But will I know when I see it? And then there, this is like three parts. So I'm gonna ask that part. So retractions and will I know when I see so, it? Retractions are when your baby is having more trouble breathing and they certain areas of the body or chest start to sink in. So above the rib cage kind of sinks in, below the rib cage kind of sinks in. 
and then sometimes between the ribs that area will mm. sink in with each breath. Little babies can't open their mouths and breathe through their mouth when their nose is stuffy so they will continue to try and breathe through their nose. So good idea to suction their noses out and try to keep their nose clear. Okay, okay, and when should it be considered an emergency, right? You yeah. know, you don't want to be that, like calling 911 or, uh -huh. you know, exactly. whatever, or driving into the, yeah. yeah. Certainly any baby who has blue discoloration around their mouth or even pallor, to me that's a medical emergency. If your baby is not waking up, it's like, you know, they've been sick for a couple days, now I just can't get them awake. It is better safe than sorry to go ahead and get your baby seen. If you're kind of on the fence, most providers have an on-call number, an on-call nurse, and you can call that number to find out. But if you're in doubt, if your baby looks critically ill to you, better safe than sorry, get them checked out sooner than later. And the younger they are, the more problematic it is. A baby under a month of age with a temperature of just 100.4 can be seriously ill, and those babies can also be seriously ill without fever even. Sometimes the body temperature is lower. Wow, this is yeah. incredible information. I can't wait till next month. So we're gonna have to talk about what we will talk about in January. Dr. Cynthia Cross, thank you so much for answering all these questions for our viewers out there. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right, coming up on Live at Nine,